Michael? Okay. Um, so I, I want to recap a bit about uh, KVM before going to checkpointing. So uh, as um, we saw yesterday that uh, KVM uh, required at the actual hardware KVM threads to fast forward and uh, we need to uh, actually uh, spend time in fast forwarding uh, if the region, uh, the fast forward region is large and the simulated system have to have the same ISA as the host and also KVM is not deterministic but also, as uh, Jason mentioned at the end, uh, KVM is really useful if we need to frequently change our software because checkpointing um, would need to retake uh, the checkpoint if we change any slight bit of our software. So if that's the scenario, KVM would be better than checkpointing, but um, checkpointing can work around some of the uh, downside that is listed here. So let's move on to checkpointing. So uh, checkpoint in Gen 5 uh, save the architectural state of the system. It saves some microarchitectural state with some limitation. A checkpoint that is taken with one system configuration can be restored with different system configurations. So the limitation include the number of cores has to be the same, the size of the memory has to be the same, and the workload and it's all its dependency, including the uh, disk image, have to be the same. So uh, let's do an uh, example on uh, checkpointing and re restoring. So uh, we will be using KVM to fast forward to the ROI of the EP uh, workload that we used yesterday. However, um, we have a different goal this time. Also, uh, we have a much simpler system than the uh, one that we used previous for the checkpointing script. So our goal here is to use KVM to fast forward uh, the simulation until the beginning of the ROI. Then when reaching the ROI begin, we will take a checkpoint and then we will exit the simulation. So all the material can be found under the uh, material folder uh, the 02 using Gen 5 and the 08 accelerating simulation and 03 uh, checkpoint and restore directory. And uh, we will first uh, edit the um, take a checkpoint uh, script to take the checkpoint. So uh, let's move to um, the directory there. Oh, so, oh, no. uh, um. So uh, let's look at our um, ticket checkpoint script. So the thing lacking in here is a cache hierarchy, uh, a memory uh, module, a processor, and our work begin handler. So uh, let's start with uh, a cache hierarchy. So um, since we can restore the, uh, our checkpoint with a system that is different from the um, checkpointing system. So we can use uh, a really simple system that's inside of the requir required restriction um, to take the checkpoint with a faster simulation speed. So for here, let's use um, no cache for our cache hierarchy. And here, let's uh, use a simple um, single channel memory as our memory component for the system. Let's use uh, three gigabyte as the size of our memory. And for the processor, we can use um, an atomic, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, we will be using a KVM uh, CPU.
And then uh, let's define our uh, work begin handler. So in here, uh, our goal is to um, take a checkpoint and then access the uh, simulation after we reach the ROI begin. So uh, we can take a checkpoint using the uh, simulator module. Inside there, there's a safe um, checkpoint function. And we can, um, we can input uh, the path to the directory where we want to save this checkpoint uh, to this function. And in here, uh, let's uh, save it to a directory that's called 03-CPT. And then we will yard uh, true to access the simulation afterward and have a print message here maybe to, um, to, know, uh, to let us know that uh, we did reach the work begin handler. And that's it, that's the script that we need to take a checkpoint. So uh, let's um, run this script with the uh, Gen5 command. So in here, we will redirect our output to the checkpointing M5 uh, out um, directory. And it might take a while to um, take the checkpoint. Okay, uh, so uh, as, as we can see here, it finished and then uh, it, it stored a checkpoint inside the 03-CPT directory. And inside there, we will find the m5.cpt file and uh, it records like all the information of what's been saved there. Uh, if you're interested, you can look over it. And also it would have um, the memory that's saved there and also this Im disk image. Um, so now let's uh, restore this checkpoint that we just took here. So uh, we can go to this um, restore the checkpoint uh, file. And uh, so the, so sorry. we can pass in the path to the checkpoint to um, with the parameter inside the simulator uh, object here. So all we need is uh, using the checkpoint path um, parameter and then pass in the checkpoint. Here we can, we can copy the uh, absolute path to here and paste it. And um, so in here, uh, for this restore uh, checkpoint simulation, we will be only running uh, one millisecond because uh, we cannot wait until it runs to the ROI end. And um, let's restore this. So while it's restoring, uh, we can uh, look at the system here. So as you can see, it's a really different system uh, from the one that we took a checkpoint. So uh, on the left is our uh, is the script that we use to restore the checkpoint. On the right is the script we use to take a checkpoint. So the cache hierarchy we use uh, for restoring is actually a private uh, L1 cache hierarchy compared to the no cache in the uh, checkpointing script. Same for the uh, memory is uh, for the restoring system is using a dual channel um, du a dual channel memory instead of the single channel that we use uh, in the checkpointing script. And also we uh, use the timing um, process uh, CPU in the uh, restoring script instead of the KVM that we used. 
But as you can see, our number of cores, our uh, memory size are exactly the same, and also uh, the workload that we used is exactly the same. So now that it finished, um, like checkpoint, oh sorry, in the finish restoring, we can uh, look at the uh, output, the sim out um, of the restoring. Actually, the sim error, sorry. Um, so in the sim error here, we can find that uh, this, uh, our simulation start from this tick instead of tick zero. And uh, if we uh, compare, uh, if we look at the M5 checkpoint, and find, um, and search for our current tick, we should see a matching tick for the checkpoint and the simulation start for our restore, uh, restore script. So, um, so we are almost like done with um, checkpointing here. So last thing is that uh, this change, uh, we like the changes we make between the restoring and checkpointing script is uh, falling within the limit of the restriction. If you are interested, you can try to change uh, the memory size in the restore script from three gigabyte to two gigabyte, and then you will encounter the following uh, error message. And um, some side note is that uh, with the checkpoint, we no longer require the host to have a matching ISA with the simulator system to get to the EEP's uh, hour begin. And when, we, uh, when taking a checkpoint with a system that has a Ruby cache, we can only use the Mossy Hammer protocol. For, uh, that's a limitation for using a Ruby cache hierarchy. Uh, so uh, for KVM, it, uh, the advantage of it is it uh, fast forward in uh, near uh, host uh, native speed and is flexible to simulation system change and is flexible to workload or and software changes. And the downside is that it's non-deterministic. The host must match the gas ISA and we currently uh, don't have a RISC V support for it. And uh, for checkpointing, the advantage is that we can create one and run it with many different systems. And uh, almost uh, all device or, and components are supported. The downside is that it cannot change workload and software at all between checkpointing and uh, restoring. Have, uh, it have restriction on the simulation system change between the checkpointing and restore scripts. And it requires uh, this uh, disk space. Let's end this with a question. What if our ROI is too large? Like we, know, we now know that how to skip the unimportant part of the simulation, but what if the important part of the simulation is too large? And uh, I will leave this um, question until the next section.